Lord and we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so elated that you have chosen to spend your Sunday worship experience with us. On behalf of our pastor and first lady, the ministers and members of Beulah Refuge Tabernacle and First Refuge of Barnwell, we say welcome. Service will begin momentarily. We invite you to like and share this live stream service at this time. We also invite you to be active in the comments, to give praises to our Lord, encouraging to the worship leaders and the man of God as he brings forth the word on this morning. If we can all stand on our feet and give God a hand clap praise in the house on this morning for being here. Let's give God a praise for being alive, for being well, for God taking us through our daily, our weekly and daily occupation. Thank you. 
This is our first Sunday, our Jubilee Sunday, where we sing our traditional apostolic songs and we give God a praise. And also, we open the floor for testimonies, for brief testimonies, for anyone that has a praise, a verbal praise unto the Lord that you would like to share of His goodness and His mercy and things that He's done in your life. So we'll give you that opportunity at this time. Opportunity. Be the first at this time. God praise. God bless. Be the first to give God a praise. God bless you. so much and at one point I thought I was kidnapped and the reason I say that because the people carried me so they give me so much problem up there when I had to get cut and really I didn't have nobody really I'm talking about that at the church but really my family really didn't really took really connect to me but my daughter Lord I tell you something at one point, the people wouldn't let me get out of the bed. And I was just moaning and groaning because this thing in my stomach was hurting me so bad. And, and, and my temperature would keep going up and keep going down. 
and every time I try to get up out of the bed, you know, people don't, don't rush and they don't tie me down and, and I couldn't get up. You know something? How strong I thought I was, I couldn't make it from this point here to right there. And if I if I had to fall. But you know something, I give God a praise and an honor because um he really visited me in there because um I really didn't know who really I was. My Lord. That's how bad I was. Jesus. And, and, and then I looked around one day, I happened to see my wife in there. And one day, I happened to see my son in there. And Lord, I didn't even really understand really what was going on. You know something? I give God a praise and a yes. honor. But you know something? When the people send me home, I think I, I went home a little too early. Because that, that aftercare that you need, you really need that aftercare. Because I think I would have, would have went back and got back in there. Because I didn't really, really receive any type of care at home, especially for my own. You know something? A lot of us put down the crack page. A lot of us put down the dope act. A lot of times we put down the prostitute and all the rest of them. But you know something? When I was sitting on that porch, and look like nobody really actually would come around and, and see about me. You know something? And I was just hurting and in pain and moaning and moaning. But those was the one that who came by and helped me. I see a crackhead walk past. And he stopped me. Mr. Do you, you, you need any help? I didn't turn him down. Because I probably had need some glass of water. I probably had need to get up and go and get in the bed. But you know something? And, and then a wine on pass by. He stopped and gave me a hand. You know something? A prostitute had passed by. They stopped. But those were the one that really was connected to me. If my daughter wasn't way out there in Columbia, they called and told her, baby, their daddy's doing bad. That girl was here in 35 minutes. That girl was here. You know, I ain't gonna put her down. But um, I have to say, give God a praise and God use whoever he wanted to use. If he use a dog or he use a jackass, he he he, he used them for my benefit. But he I get God a praise on that because I didn't have no, I couldn't even bend down. I was crying. A big old cruel grown man crying because I was not getting the help. My sister couldn't do it because she pretty much didn't walk on her own. You know, let alone if I happen to see one of the church members, they come out and do for me. But what my, my, my immediate family? No. I give God a praise and give him the honor and, and I will not put down those, those crack that God help those people that who is misguided misled but God use him in a spiritual way because it, Mr. Baxter oh, oh, we, we know that you did for me when I got, remember that time when I need something you help me out but at that time when I had need them they stopped and helped me you know I didn't have to call out their name they said sir you better give me some help you need some help I give God a praise and honor and thank God that He allowed me to still be here today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give Him the praise. Amen. Give God a hand for that praise. Praise the Lord.
my mother couldn't work me out because she found out my father was married and cheating on his father. She tried to get rid of me mm -hmm. and all kind of ways. But God wants me here. That's right. Yeah. I've been raped, sodomized. Yeah. I've been beat up. I've up in the hood of drugs. I've been through the mill. But God still has me here. Yes. And I just thank God that for my mother and father. God bless their soul. My mother's gone. My father's gone. My brother's gone. My sister's going the one sister I have that I came down here to be with, I'm invisible to her. Mm -hmm. See, when you come in Christ Jesus, you get all glorious. Yes, it's glorious because God is covered. But people can't stand you, and they hate you, and they do all kinds of stuff. And the Bible said, if you have a voice against your brother, you must go to them and make it right. I did go to her and make it right, and I'm still invisible, but you know, I just have to say, I'm so glad that Jesus is in me. I'm so glad that Jesus is in me.
for goodness, his love, and his mercy. And we have the blessed assurance within our soul before the first rising of the sun to the last going down of the same. He was God, he is God, and shall forever be God. And his name is Lord Jehovah, Jesus the Christ. To him be glory, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Look at your neighbor and say, I really love the Lord. Now, if you don't really love it, don't say it. Say, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Hey, go Oh, yes, I am. And thank God I know he loves me. Thank you, Jesus. I bless God and I praise his wonderful name today. We certainly give honor to all of our ministerial brethren in the presence of our assistant pastor, amen, Elder Kelsey Mack, assistant pastor, Elder Billy C. Hampton, to uh, Minister Urban Ryan in his absence, to all of our deacons, our blessed and precious mothers, to our first lady, Shepherd Mother Smith to our church mother, Mother Inez Dunning, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, we say praise the Lord. And we certainly bless God for this wonderful day. As Deacon Baxter said, when we look and saw the sun shining through the through the curtain, my God, we have to say thank you, Lord. You kept me through another night. Amen. Didn't keep myself. I didn't wake myself up. My God, it was you, Lord. And I give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. We certainly bless God and we just have been delighted. Amen. For all of you that are present here with us on this Lord's day. 
the uh, this first Sunday in the month of July, just really hard to phantom in your mind that over half of the year has gone by. But it has. But God has been faithful and good. We're certainly grateful to the Lord for uh, our visitation today from, amen, our sister Jennifer Nafar, Nanfar, excuse me. See what then? Young for okay. The end is silent. I've been messing your name up then. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. But we certainly bless the Lord. Amen for Sister Jennifer Young for. Amen. And her gifted and talented son. I'm on this morning, Brother Arthur Yanfor. Yeah, Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Instead of Arthur, put up with Sister Jennifer. If y'all don't know, uh, Brother Arthur, God bless you, son. So good to have you here uh, with us. We are going to have him come and, and play for us just before I preach. Not quite yet. And unless you want to come over and get warmed up. But uh, we're going to have him to give us a musical rendition. Amen. Uh, just before I preach, uh, Brother Arthur is a student at the Eastland School of Music in Rochester, New York. He studied to be a concert violinist. Amen. And, uh, and he has been honored by his school as being a very superior student. Amen. And uh, one of a great future ahead of him who loved the Lord, the Holy Ghost feel. And don't mind that you know about it. And we certainly bless the Lord. Isn't that something? My God. To have a man baptized in the Holy Ghost, playing the first hit violin on the off, on the New York Orchestra. Isn't that be something? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord and we praise God. And Brother Arthur is going to bless us in a little while. Amen. With all, all, all of his own choosing a musical selection unto the glory and the honor of our God. We certainly thank God for all of our musicians and for the, the vital role that they play within our worship experience. Amen. We bless the Lord. And, uh, every time I look over there and see Jonathan, I, I just have to laugh because you have to remember Jonathan. Amen. I've never known a child as a little boy that was so aware that he was a man child. Amen. Before Jonathan could talk, before he could utter words, my God, he was giving his big cousins, my God, orders what to do and what not to do. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to leave the house and I said, Jonathan, you take care of things that I get back. And I couldn't hardly turn my back to walk out before he was saying, yeah, you <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And I, I know that the night his dad is hard and the night his uncle's hard too. And we just certainly the bless of God for him and for young men. That's what I'm that's where I'm going. Young men whose hearts have been touched by God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You look at Brother Henry over on, on that on that keyboard, Holy Ghost Bill. Baptized in Jesus' name. Praise the breaking in his house on last week. And he was here in the church of God. Amen. Rendering praise unto the Lord. Amen. Isn't that wonderful to know that all of them ain't strung out on drugs? And we will be praying as Deacon Bex was saying for God to break those that's on drugs, off of drugs. All right, God, to give them awareness of their place in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. Young men that are stand up and be men anointed of God. And we bless the name of God. Amen. For all of them and for their amen, participation. Amen. In the work in the kingdom of God. And we bless the Lord and we praise God. Now, I want us to be mindful that starting this coming Thursday uh, at uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30, amen, um, we will begin our July Convocation of the South Carolina Upstate Diocese. We'll start that Thursday with the Women's Ministry Department under our uh, mother, uh, Dr. Donella Wilson and her staff on that 
Thursday, amen, and then on that Friday, the missionary department and the leadership of our uh, missionary lady, uh, Lena Miller, and her staff will be in charge of service at 6.30 on Friday. And then on Saturday at noon, uh, our minister Frank Garrett and the young people department and Elder Donald Searson and the Sunday School Department will commence their services at 12 o'clock. And then uh, somewhere between three and four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, the executive department will convene, amen, our district elder, uh, Harold uh, Young, our executive secretary, and yours truly, the diocese of bishop, amen, will convene and we will have and close out our uh, uh, convocation, state convocation on next week. Now, I need you here in the house. There's a lot of work that's going to go on. We see the parking. We need for the church to be in the room to help make sure that everything is in order, to help, amen, with the food uh, distribution over in the Bonner Center, because if you don't do it, Mother Smith will try to do it all by herself. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know she will appreciate your help. Amen. All of you that can and will come and be there and um, um, to, to lay, be of an assistance here. We are hosting uh, that Saturday ending of the state convocation. Now come and be part of it. We want to be blessed. Amen. Uh, I'm going to minister on that Saturday evening. And I'm not sure what the women's ministry program is. I know it will be good along with our missionary department. So come and be part of, the, of, the, of all the goings on in our July convocation of the South Carolina Upstate Diocese of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So now we look forward to that and we bless God and we praise him for all of his goodness. If y'all going to do that, look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And we bless the Lord and we praise him. As I was listening to Bishop Brandon Jacobs uh, preaching on the other, other night and he was talking how important it is for us to be used of God and we don't have to be in the limelight all the time to be used of God. Look at your neighbor. As I heard Deacon Baxter said, my God, y'all remember how the Lord used the, the donkey? My God, to keep uh, Balaam from getting killed? My God. My God said, don't you see that angel with his sword drawn? Save Balaam's life. My God. So, my God. And so that's what God wants somebody that's willing to say, yes, Lord, here I am. Use me for your glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to get ready to receive our tithe and our offerings. Uh, I know there's been some controversy on this week uh, uh, distributed by one of our national evangelists on the situation of tithes and offerings. People coming to understand it. Amen. But if you got any questions, you heard it. You come see Pastor and I explain it to you properly. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And uh, we bless the Lord just because it took him this long time to come to understand. And thank God we've been doing it. Praise God. And amen. We bless the Lord. At this time, we want to have our offertory uh, um, um, announce of directions by our sister um, Benjamin. And our sister Hampton is going to follow with our announcement. Sister Benjamin. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm going to ask everyone to please stand. I'm going to offer to everyone to come to the pulpit. For those of you who wish to put some gifts on the table, remain standing in faith and sit on our and give us a break to buy us For those of you who also have an option to pay via cash app or PayPal. Let us all look to the Lord for his blessings upon us. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, it is in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus, that we come, Lord, to say thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for choosing us. We did not choose ourselves. It was you that picked us out and called us unto yourself. Sanction us with your spirit. And we pray now, God, that you would bless your people 
that as they would come, they would come with the same spirit that you gave of yourself, giving to the work of the Lord with joy. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. I pray now, God, that as your people would give with that cheerful heart, that you would return it unto them as your word said you would. Press down and shaken together and running over. Do it for your glory, Lord, and we'll praise you. We'll magnify you. We'll exalt you. All blessings we ask now in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all say amen. Let us come now as our announcements are being made by our sister Hampton under the directions of our ushers. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God for being in the house on this morning. First, we would like to say happy birthday to all of the July birthdays. Amen. We thank God for being here. We thank God for you even this morning joining us here at New Shepherd Tabernacle 469 Landfill Road. Even to all of those that are visiting us on this morning, we say praise the Lord to you. Pray that you have a blessed day on today. If you are watching us via Facebook Live and teleconference call, we pray that you are blessed today through the word of God that will be brought forth through our pastor, Bishop David A. Smith. We encourage you to praise God and also to encourage the worship leaders and the soloists and the violinists on this morning. Praise God. Our announcements for this week. Don't forget, on Wednesday night is Bible study via Facebook Live at 7.30 p.m. On Thursday, the service will be virtual. The South Carolina Upstate Women's Department service will be virtual. On Saturday, the missionary service will be virtual. We will get out to you all of the information. We will text you and call you about the information concerning the numbers. Amen. On Saturday, remember that it is in person. We want to see you here in the place at 12 noon on Saturday. Next week, don't forget, on the 13th and 14th is Vacation Bible School here at Mule Refuge Tabernacle. And on the week of the 19th through the 24th is our International Convention in Greensboro. If you would like to have a little cold lemonade on today, please see our sister Brittany Miller after service. She can help you out. Amen. Pray much for our sick and our shut in. Our sister Emma Jenkins. Amen. Our sister Jean Kitt. Our deacon. Baxter, as he is here in the midst, recovering a man, and also remember our mother Jackson on this morning. Remember, you pray for me, I pray for you, and what? We're going to watch God change things. Amen. Thank you so much this morning, our thought for this week. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked in. That's what the storm is all about. Amen. God bless you. And now a selection. Amen. All right. Well, we certainly bless the Lord, and we're just so happy uh, for the blessings of the Lord. And um, I am particularly uh, pleased of God when I see young men such as this that have in their very youth given their lives to the Lord. Uh, that's why Jonathan blesses my heart so because it was in his youth that my son 
son-in-law, Deacon Frank Simpson, in his early youth, gave his heart to the Lord. I was 13 years old when I got saved, when God filled me with the Holy Ghost in my youth. And I bless God for that. And I praise him for him maintaining me these 50 some odd years that he's given me joy within my heart to know him. And I am just so delighted today for this young man who too gave, is given himself in his youth to the Lord to walk with God and chosen. No one coerced him into it. No one bullied him into it. It is of his choosing, of his choice of God. As Sister Ruth sang the song the other week, I've decided to follow Jesus. And this is what this young man has done. Made a decision at the call of God to follow the voice of God. And we're going to ask now our brother Arthur uh, Yan Ford to come and to bless us uh, with a, a rendition of his choosing. Amen. And after which I will return with the message for the morning. Brother Yan Ford, God bless you, son. Especially got to learn that this past year. Um, Bless me so. Um, going all the way to New York, New York, and Rochester. I'm at the Eastman School of Music. And, um, you know, this, you know, I'm a little South Carolina, this country boy, you know, and then going to the big, the big apple. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, <laughs> my mom has to. Kind of, kind of drill me. Okay, this is what you gotta do. Okay, don't let, don't look at anybody. Just walk straight. And just, you know. So, so um, yeah, I had to learn. Um, but I, I got up there, and I can tell you, the Lord, I got to know Him as the protector, and I got to experience His favor and His grace and His mercy. So I guess this is my testimony. So many times I've been up there, you know, people doing crazy stuff every day, all day, every day. <laughs> and, you know, so many of my friends, they would, well, my friends there, they would be, oh, you want to go to the beach? Oh, let's go to this party. Let's do, let's do all this. And I'm like, mm, ah. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, eh. and I didn't realize that that was the Holy Spirit talking to me. I didn't realize that until one of my friends, she came up to me and she said, you know, um, a lot of times we would go out and we would party and we would do all this stuff. And every single time, you've always denied it. But then every time something would happen and you would miss like, one, one time they went somewhere, they got stranded. Someone left their bag, they missed their train. Another time someone got stranded at the beach, they had to sleep in, at the beach overnight. And I just thank the Lord, and I believe that was his angel speaking to me, telling me that I'm covered, I'm protected. And so I think so many people who were praying for me, who, You don't even know. I don't know anything. You know, I've never even been out of the country. Going up to New York, you see so many crazy things all day, and you think, okay, well, Lord, did you forget about me? But I, I came to just tell you that He's a way maker, and He's a miracle worker. So I want to just give this selection on today. Um, I was going to say the name of the song, but. I'll, I'll probably just let you guess afterwards. Um, I feel like that'll be more fun. <laughs> um, 
but uh, musicians, musicians, if you want to follow me, I'm in B flat, um, but I might change key uh, to C. We'll see about that. <laughs> see if you can catch me. <laughs>
Genesis chapter 37, beginning with verse 5. And this message, that how apropos his musical selection was, deals with the faithfulness of God. Genesis chapter 37, beginning with verse 5. The Bible reads, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose, also stood upright and behold your sheep stood round about and made obedience to my sheep and his brethren said to him shall thou indeed reign over us or shall thou indeed have dominion over us and they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words and he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said behold I have dreamed a dream more 
And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obedience to me. And he told it to his father and his, and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the same. I want to speak briefly as possible from the subject, I can see it. Yes, that's Jesus. I can see it. Gracious God, our Father, we pray now in the name of your dear Son, Jesus, that you would speak to us, Lord, a word of life, a word that will produce growth within your people that in the midst of their struggle, because of their commitment to you, your faithfulness is undaunted. And we pray now, God, that you would cause life to explode within them now. Touch those that are sick within their bodies. Give healing and deliverance now. Lord, do it for your glory. Save that lost one, that one that know you're not. Open their eyes to see in their ears, to hear their hearts, to feel your great love. Do it now, Lord, and we'll praise you and give you the glory and honor. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I can see it. As we were listening to our Brother Nan, uh, Yan for speaking relative to the environment that he found there in New York, having lived all of his life here in the quiet atmosphere, semi-quiet atmosphere, if you will, of the back, semi-quiet atmosphere of South Carolina. Praise the name of the Lord. That he found there uh, lifestyles of people that's very unsettling. Many people doing atrocious things, things that they ought not to do, things that will not pronounce the favor of God upon their lives. Praise the wonderful name of the Lord. People that are without hope and aspirations in this world. Uh, hopeless people is a defeated people. People without any kind of aspirations are a people that is doomed for gloom and a remorseful filled life. People without any kind of resource in their mind to comprehend and to understand the breadth and the length of the love of God. I was once told by one of my mentors in the preaching ministry, the Apostle Wilbur Jones, of something that Apostle W. L. Bonner said to him and others, that a man's dream should be big enough to cover the entirety of his life. That dream within you, as our founding apostle Robert Clarence Lawson said, to deny that inward dream is to commit an impartable sin. To turn your back on the vision, the aspiration, the hope, the dream, God places within you to denounce it by your actions and as Deacon Baxter so wonderfully prayed in his prayer 
that many have walked away from God as though they have done their workings on their own. And he prayed fervently, Lord, bring them back to the understanding that it is you. Uh, for without doubt, there will be great controversies that will present roadblocks to try to stop you. Harriet Tubman is said to have said, leading slaves out of slavery, going from the slave plantation to the northern states where they could find a place of freedom. She urged them when you hear the barking of the hounds, when you see the light of the torches behind you, when you hear the snarling and the growling of the voices on your heels, she said, whatever you do, don't stop. To hold fast to keep moving forward. I come today to tell you, Beulah, that no matter what the adversary is doing, when you hear the barking of the hounds on your trail, when you hear the words of discredit of you, don't stop. Keep moving. Uh, John 16 and 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Are you listening to me? Joseph had dreamed. To Joseph, this was the very word of Almighty God. This was the word of Yahweh. The self-existent God. The one that needed no instruction as to how to do, when to do, and for who to do it for. Joseph dreamed this dream. His dream grew his heart. Joseph saw through the eyes of God. It is necessary, my brothers and sisters, that you are able to look through and into the eyes of God and with the eyes of God. Joseph was overwhelmed by his dream. He was emotionally charged. He was delighted in the fact that God had given him a special status to the point as to where he came to his brethren and said, Behold his brothers, his blood brothers, Joseph being the eleventh son of Jacob and the firstborn of the love of Jacob's heart, Rachel. Rachel womb was barren, but Leah and the Egyptian servant had bad Jacob children, ten sons. And now Rachel in her old age, my God was, my God received this boy and they named him Joseph. Joseph found himself in the favor of God. Are you aware of your status with God? There are those of us who are afraid to identify themselves as being favored by God. The Bible says that we are the righteousness of God. He that knew no sin, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, he that knew no sin became sin or became the offering 
for sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. Look at your neighbor and declare to them, say, you are the righteousness of God. Joseph had the dream of his favorite status. Came to his brothers and said, behold, look at what God has promised me. How many of y'all know you got a promise from the Lord? Look at somebody and say, I can see it. He said, behold, is to have in sight. It is used imperatively to direct one's attention to something or a certain manner. God does not take pleasure. Paul declares, I, in that 10th chapter of Hebrews, that God takes no pleasure in them that draw back unto perdition, but to those that 39th and 40th verse. But we are of those who believe to the saving of our souls. How many of y'all believe in your dream? Praise the name of the Lord. To view it, to know it, to observe it. Imperatively command Joseph said, Behold, want you to see. My God, as Apostle Bonner said, your dream has got to be big enough to cover the entirety of your life. What you see and anticipate has to be greater than what you are negatively experiencing right now. I come to tell you one more time, the problem that you have, the difficulty that you are experiencing did not come from God. You listening to me? Nowhere in the Bible will it tell you that all the hell that you go through came to strengthen you. It came to kill you. Came to destroy you. Yeah. Told y'all what mother, the Lord spoke to Mother Smith after the first stroke she had in 2002 when the devil was about to fan her to sleep to go on and die. The Lord spoke to her from John 10 and 10. The thief cometh but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Arthur, God wants you to have an abundant life, an overflowing life. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Some people would have died from what you experienced, Deacon Baxter. There have been those that have, but you still here. Can I hear the witness in the house? No wonder Paul declared what you got to be, got to anticipate it to be greater than what you're negatively experiencing right now. Paul said in Galatians 6 and 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you are going to reap if you faint not. Take your neighbor and say, I feel no way tired. Hallelujah. Said the hounds are on the trail, but I still hear the words of Harriet Tubman said, Don't stop. Look at your neighbor and say, Don't stop. Don't stop. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must see what is set before us in order to appreciate the eventual outcome of every inevitable circumstance that we are confronted with. Did you hear what I said? conditions that you go through are inevitable. They're going to come because you have an adversary who is determined to want to stop you. If I had preached that other message this morning, it would have been be alert. My God, because you have an adversary. My God, Peter said, 
My God, the enemy, the, the, the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whomever he may devour. But look at your neighbor and say, he's not going to devour me. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I'm prepared for the circumstance. Hallelujah. I got my mind made up. Sister Ruth, I made a decision to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Come hell by high water. I made up my mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Which means, my brothers and sisters, you don't get sidetracked by other people's opinions. You don't get carried away by their antics against you. Hallelujah. You can't let that dwell. You can't dwell on that. You hear what I say? You got to cast it aside. You got to get rid of it. Because God is your help. My God, you can't. My God, spend the rest of your life. My God, belly aching about what somebody did to you. How they lied on you. How they did this against you. How they wouldn't love you right. Wouldn't treat you right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil wants you to faint. But I heard the psalmist declare in Psalms 27 and 13, I have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Are you listening to me? You need to know. Look at your name and say, Bishop, say, you need to know this. Thank you, Jesus. You need to know that you are God's responsibility. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My children, my three daughters are full grown women. They make more money than I make. Hello, somebody. But as grown as they are, they are still my responsibility. Thank you, Jesus. They come to me with a need. I can't tell them, say, child, my God, I done raised you. I done fed you. I done put clothes on you. Go on, you, you're on your own now. Thank you, Jesus. The devil is alive. You might tell yours that, but I ain't telling mine that. Thank you, Father. I'm not telling my daughters that. It's not going to happen. My God, I was telling Mother Smith the other night. My God, when Madison was just a little baby, my God and Nisa and Deacon Frank was staying with us until they were ready to build their home. And, and Nisa had just come out of the hospital, praise the Lord, and was ready to go back to work. Mother Smith was still working, and the Bella and Dolores and Denise and Frank was working. I was retired. Thank you, Jesus. So in the midnight, after 12 o'clock, when Madison would wake up, my God, it was Papa's job to give her midnight bottle and change her pamper and hold her while she was wide awake. And little Madison was sitting there in my arm, I was sitting on the edge of the bed, and the little head was just bobbing and weaving, looking around the room. And I told Madison these words. I said, Madison, Papa will never tell you yo yo. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, some of y'all didn't hear what I said. Thank you, Jesus. Papa will never tell you yo yo that you are on your own. Look at your neighbor and say, I hear the Father will never tell you yo yo. Thank you, Jesus. You've been bought for a price. You're the responsibility of God. Deacon Baxter doing his prayer. My God, he must have said Father in his prayer must be 30 times. And what not wrong with that? Because he was praying to his heavenly Father. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Hallelujah. Paul declared in Philippians 1 and 6, he said, being confident of this very thing, 
that he would have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, so you got to be confident in this thing. Hello, somebody. Confidence in God is not jumping up, shouting, and dancing. That's part of it. That's a good part of it. But I've seen a lot of people could dance, my God, the holy dance like nobody else in the world. And before they could get out of the church, they was cussing somebody out. Before the week was over, my God, they was all mad and ugly and stank with people. Thank you, Jesus. But Paul declared, said, being confident of this very thing, that he that has begun, he that started a good work in you is able to perform it. Listen what Paul says in 2 Timothy 1 and 12, talking about himself and his salvation. He says, for he said he God called him. He said he was the chief among sinners. But he says here, for I know in whom I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed into his hand against that day. Have you committed it all in God's hand? You can't make your husband live right. You can't make your wife live right. You can't make your children live right. But commit them in the hand of God. Tell them, God, you got to do it. I can't do it. Hallelujah. An unmovable confidence in the ability of God on your behalf. See, this is what Joseph was confident in. Joseph knew that God had given him a dream. He know he didn't eat no uh, overripe tomatoes and went to bed and got the colic and was tossing and turning with a bad dream. But God gave him the dream. God gave him a word of prophecy in his dream. And Joseph was unmovable in the ability of God to bring it to pain. And let me tell you something. There are going to be some tests oh, yes. to your confidence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You're just not going to slide in this. My God, like you stealing the home plate. Thank you, Jesus. The ball went over the catcher's head. No, sir. It's going to be some opposition for you. Even the giving of your tithe and offerings command your confidence in God's ability to bless your life. Because sometimes you give your tithes and offering and you give the very last dime you had. And you know you got a bill due on next week. But you have the confidence that somehow God going to make a way. Is there a witness in the house? Thank you, Jesus. That God will Come through. Tell your neighbor that I can see it. I can see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He promised to bless. You must not wait for anyone to confirm or affirm you. And this is where all of us go wrong, man. We get all crossed up because somebody didn't come and pat you on the back. Preachers can't even preach. My God, because somebody didn't say, Hallelujah! And because they wasn't running around the church. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Can't do nothing. Let somebody pat them on the back. Can't even pick a piece of paper up off the floor unless somebody, my God, pat them on the back. I hope y'all ain't got that spirit that my baby daughter had. I got to tell you one more time, Dolores. Thank you, Jesus. Dolores was just a little thing. Walking around. Oh, as a child. My, as a child, yes. <laughs> <laughs> little thing and, and sitting out in front of the TV. 
ain't even swept the first floor, ain't picked up the first piece of paper yet. And I said, Loris, pick up that piece of paper there by you. I got to do everything. <laughs> Ain't done nothing yet. She's a hard worker now. There she is. This girl puts you in shame. My God, God learned her. Tell you, let me say, he learned her. He didn't teach her. He learned her. Thank you, Jesus. I got to do everything. Thank you, Jesus. And that's just the attitude of some of us. Ain't nobody patting you on the back. My God, so you can't do it. But I don't need nobody to affirm or confirm me. I know God called me. I preach without salary. I preach years without a dime from the church. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Father. I drove up and down the road for many days without getting anything. I did revivals for pastors struggling in their churches. And didn't take no offering. A whole week's revival. Thank you, Jesus. But God is faithful to his word. That if you do for me, I'll do for you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What, what that thing the Lord told you, Mother Smith? My God, said you take care of my business, and I'll take care of yours. Look at your neighbor and say, I got a problem. From God, if I take care of his business, he'll take care of mine. You know, he's taking care of my business. He's providing for me right now. Can I get a witness? Have you ever heard the voice of God assuring you? I know I have. My God, standing there in my den, in the front of my fireplace with my hand on the metal, the brick metal, troubled within my mind about some money that Sheva Mother Smith and I owed the IRS over $100,000. And they were demanding payment. So, Lord, I ain't got that kind of money. Oh, God. Worried in my spirit. Troubled within my mind. Getting up ready to go to church. Struggling in my mind about this bill from the IRS. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. But I heard Mother Dunning a sweet, still voice that was spoke to Elijah in the cave. I heard the Lord, Deacon Miller, I heard him say, Oh! Woo! I heard him say, son, I'll take care of this. Hallelujah. Y'all not listening to me. And like he said he would, he did. To the IRS, canceled it. Oh, y'all not listening. I own some, I own a little bit right now. But they canceled that one thousand dollars. Y'all not listening to me. Thank you, Jesus. Tell your neighbors, y'all can see it. Thank God. You're going to go through some suffering. But don't try to circumvent the process. Did you hear what I said? Thank you, Jesus. Go through what I told you Harry Tubman said. When you see that you had a house on the trail, don't stop. Keep going to freedom. Let the name say, keep going to the blessed land. Keep going to the promised land. God made your promise. He will keep it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go through the process. God has an intended end for you. Jeremiah 29 and 11. The Bella's favorite scripture. I know the thought. Take your neighbor say, God know the thoughts. Hello, somebody. I don't care what people do. De de God got his thoughts about Chris Baxter. Hello, somebody. Did you hear what I just said? Betty Jean, my God, if I decide to go to hell tomorrow or tonight, God already made a decision about you. Hello, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, God already made a decision about me. I know the thoughts that I think towards.
Lord Jesus. Thought of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Look at your neighbor and say, I got a dream of an expected end. Say, I can see that. Say, the devil challenges me. But I can see that. Can you see it? Say, glory. Don't try to second bit it. Press your way from our press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Press on, saints. Press on. Press on. Oh, yes. Can somebody say yes? Oh, Lord. My head. Paul said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. God got a glory that He's going to reveal. After a while, be His steadfast for the lifeless. It's just for a moment, and it works it. I'm going to see it in the way to grow in glory. Say glory. Look at your neighbor and say there's a blessing on the other side of through. Go through. Press through. Fall out. Fall out. Joseph saw through all the obstacles. His brothers hated him so until they sold him into slavery. Can you imagine in your mind having a dream that says your brothers are going to come and bow down to you? And you end up being sold into slavery for 30 pieces of silver by your brothers. Hallelujah. God got somebody that's going to stand for you. When everybody else walk away from you, God got somebody. Now Judah, the son of Jacob, was the tribe that Jesus Christ our Savior came through. But it wasn't Judah that kept the brothers from killing Joseph. It was Reuben who himself was a murderer. God will bring you, my God, victory and help from an unexpected source. Yes, Lord. When all dimensions were closed against you, when we were building this church and the bank had loaned us and given us a mortgage and they told us, told me and Sister Sandy that we can loan you this, but this is all we can loan you. We can't loan you all another dime because this is the limit what we feel you all can pay us back comfortably. We can't give you any more. The pews that you were sitting in was coming. And they were nearly $40,000 for the pews. And we had raised about a third of that to pay for it. And they were coming. The banker came for his final visit to settle up with the contractor what they owed him. He came through. And the late Deacon Scott, Ernest Scott said to me, he said, Pastor, tell him about it. And the Lord urged me to do it. And as Mr. Amy from the bank exited the front doors and walked down the steps to leave, I said, Mr. Amy, 
I said, my pews are coming on Tuesday and I don't have all the money to pay them for the pews. He turned around, took his hand and pointed to me and said, David, call Ann at the bank and tell her, I said, give me whatever you need. Oh! <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah, you neighbor! Thank God I got it figured out! The devil got it confused! But God got it figured out already! Be not dismayed! Whatever be time, God will take care of you! Somebody say glory! Say glory! Say glory! Yeah. 
up to me to pick you up. See, that's what that's what dad is supposed to do. If you never had a relationship with your daddy, I'm, 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 I wish that you had. Let me tell you a quick another story about Dolores. She was facing a very serious situation. I won't go into the details of it. Things had not worked out for her. I hope I don't cry when I sell this. Because in the wee hours of just this morning, contemplating on this message, I thought about this. And as I thought about it, tears just rolled down my cheek. Everybody's sleeping in the house. And my heart was hurt so Hurt so about it. I knew what was going on in my heart it was here before. And she took it as long as she could take it. And she came running in my room. I was sitting on the edge of the bed. And she took her head. And she said, Oh, Daddy. My baby laid her head on my shoulders and I embraced her and whispered in her ear that God will make it all right. That's what dad is do. That's what fathers do. I didn't preach Father's Day. I told you all about Elder Hampton and Jonathan. And Jonathan was just a little baby boy, barely good enough to stand up in his crib. And Jonathan had taken sick. That's why he had to be hospitalized. And that Sunday morning before coming to church, I stopped by the hospital. And Willie C was with Jonathan. And when I came in the room, after a while, Jonathan got very irritable. Very irritable. He began to weep and cry. This is nothing I can hardly tell without shedding tears. And Ella Hampton, Willie C, picked Jonathan up at the crib, put him in his arms and wrapped his arms around him. He to talk to him in that baby talk. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. And all I can do is reach up and touch me to see on the shoulder. But because of the comfort and the assurance of his daddy's arms, Jonathan sees from weeping because of the strength that his father exuded to him. Lay it on the God. When you think he can't go another step, Joseph found himself in prison, in Pharaoh's prison, a long way from the promise of God that his brother and his father would bow down. But he held fast his commitment and Pharaoh called him forth to interpret his dream. And Joseph ended up being the governor of the whole land of Egypt, second only to Pharaoh himself. And when 
when his brothers came to Egypt for grain, Joseph eventually revealed himself to them. He could restrain himself no longer. He and his brothers embraced one another. He didn't have a vindictive spirit. And he said, is my father yet alive? He had not met his baby brother, Benjamin. He said, go and bring my father back to me. And all of Israel came and dwelt in the land of Egypt. Upon the fulfilling of God's dream to Joseph, that they shall bow down to him. Be faithful. Be steadfast. Unmovable. As only Sister Huggins can quote, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, everyone's steady. Far, far. Yeah. 